All right, what's going on? What's up? What's up? So let me get this off really quick. So welcome. This is uh, Tony Abreu with the Night Hunting Podcast. It is episode number four. And uh, today is February 21st, 2023. And I'm starting to really figure out this whole live stream thing. It's definitely different um to do it this way but hey i'm trying to stretch myself and learn some different things so that's what i'm doing so episode four and episode three we talked about uh some of the night hunting gear and stuff and in this episode uh and episode number four we're going to talk about things to hunt at night so currently uh live in florida and uh it is legal to night hunt here as well as most states now. It's starting to become more legal. And the reason is, I mean, I think a big reason is because of the damage that is happening across the United States from these crazy uh, animals. So let's talk about that. So different things to hunt at night. Um, currently, right now, it's February 2021st or February 20 February 21st and we're just coming off a of winter uh the coyote breeding season is pretty well in effect here but in other places it's about to crank up and deer season just ended and right now for me currently I am mainly hunting different properties right now for coyotes um there's actually i was out shooting on sunday and seen a couple of fresh calves that just got dropped and we hunt that property pretty regular um the last time we went there we actually ended up killing one coyote and saw seven total and um the coyotes there i mean honestly you know, some people say that they call and they never see the dogs or they hang up or whatever. It really just depends on what the dog is ready to do at that moment. I mean, you just never can tell if they're going to come or not. And you don't know if there's other people around you in different areas calling them and they're just not responding or, you know, I've ran through different sounds and it took me anywhere from five to ten sounds to get one coming on a string it just really depends on the mood the wind you know all kinds of stuff so but currently right now uh, my main focus is coyotes and with the coming off of winter and um you know being in the spring coming the farmers are definitely getting ready to plant um, I'm starting to see the watermelon fields everywhere going down as far as the bedding goes and stuff. And I know for a fact that my brother-in-law works for a farm and they are starting to uh, plan for corn. Uh, he's already asked me to possibly come and take care of some hog problems on some fields that they're trying to get. So, and then also, you know, my favorite time of the year is spring because of the watermelons and the deer depredation uh you know i love love chasing deer on the crops just because to me it's just like a bonus of night hunting so but animals to hunt um you know at night let's start with hogs so i just wanted to go over some of the stuff here and one of the reasons why night hunting is not going anywhere um this is a huge deal as far as, I mean, hogs have been in Florida ever since I can remember. When I was a kid, we used to hunt down in South Florida in this huge place. My dad had huge platform buggy and, uh, you know, there was always hogs. And then not to mention growing up in high school, a lot of people and a lot of people still do, including my brother. They hunt hogs with dogs. They catch them live. They either kill them or they tie them up and remove them. So I know he, for a fact, I talked to him on Sunday, he's still doing a lot of that. Um, but the hogs aren't going anywhere. And the thing about it is, is I remember when I was 
you know, I'm 45 right now. When I was 18, 19, 17, I would go up to Alabama hunting with my great uncle in northwestern Alabama, and there was not a hog up there. And now there's hogs everywhere up there. Uh, Georgia, lots of hogs. Um, I know Arkansas has them because they got a mascot named after the Razorbacks, but Texas loaded with hogs. And I mean, I, I mean, let's just look at this right here. Um, and let me see, I, I got this screen, but I need to share the screen here. Uh, let's see, screen two and share. So, so all I did was type in hog damage 2022. Um, the first headline that comes up from December 2nd is inside the government's failing fight against feral hogs. I mean, just face it, one sow can have up to 30 pigs a year and, and, and up to 15 twice a year. So, and I've actually seen this. I've been in the field, you know, in a hunting lease before and saw two different sows with probably 15 plus pigs. I mean, there was, I ended up killing one of the sows and there were little baby pigs running everywhere and they couldn't have been more than three, four pounds each. I mean, they were so tiny. But they are definitely, they just produce a lot and they don't stop. And they're getting, they, they're they pretty smart animals. Um, they don't just stay in one place. They follow the food and, you know, they definitely respond to pressure. So even to scroll down a little bit, wild hog damage losses in the millions, feral hog damages in state or slash region add up to $2.5 billion a year, you know. Um, and, and and just 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 to keep going here, how to stop feral hogs from causing millions of dollars of damage. Um, I thought this was good. Feral pigs going hog wild across Georgia causing millions. Uh, and then I seen somewhere else, maybe it was down here. It was okay. Wild hogs in Tennessee, Texas. You know they're bad. Um, I mean it. There, oh, right here it was. Feral pigs cause mounting environmental damage in California. So pigs are not going anywhere. Night hunting is not going anywhere. So to me, it's a great thing to be able to get after them. And most of the pigs that I've, I started out shooting pigs in basically on a lease, um, which it's 65 acres that butts up to like thousands of acres it's just a little small piece of that's really a thousand like thousands of acres connected to and um you know i'm actually back in there hunting that again there's definitely pigs that come and go um actually shot at one the other night and unfortunately i did not have my tripod and i tried to shoot it freehand and just missed just missed i'm just have a hard time shooting freehand with one of my rifles that I have a little short barrel, but anyways, um, it is what it is, but that's one of the spots. And then a lot of the other spots where I've killed a lot of pigs is in farm fields, uh, basically either planted or not. Um, they're always around, they're around the woods and then they come out in the fields at night and just root it to pieces. Um, also got a buddy that he had to control of that field and he has 80 acres that he lives on and he planted grass there for hay. And as soon as he did, the hogs were just ripping his grass to shreds. I mean, to the point where you, it's hard to even mow it because they just destroy it. So that was another spot. Um, also been in another spot where there was pigs a lot of pigs coming through one hole and we actually got a bunch of those one time and my buddy's still hunting pigs next door there so the pigs are definitely fun um, it's definitely different than a coyote pigs actually can be called uh, there is an app out there there's a guy named glenn guess that actually has a lot of pigs and uh i have an app on my phone it's the convergent app they actually had a small Bluetooth style call that they've had for years. And uh, it basically um, works off the phone and then you connect it to the app. And 
Um, there's tons of different calls on there. And I've, 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 I've put that on a feeder one time on the lease that I hunt and turned it on and pigs actually came. So thought that was pretty cool. Never really bought the Bluetooth speaker, although we did hook it up to uh, one of the Bose speakers before, and that was pretty cool. But I didn't buy that one speaker, but now I have a Icotec. Um, uh, I have the Night Stalker Plus, which runs Bluetooth. And in order to get that app to run, which I need to look that app up because it's, I forget the name of it exactly. Okay, so it's called Hog Pro, and it's by Convergent. And in order to get that to run on a different Bluetooth system, it's like twenty four ninety five to unlock it, which is pretty cool because there's a ton of good sounds on there. So you can call them. There's definitely people in Louisiana, which there I follow a guy out of Louisiana or a couple guys that have a full on business hunting hogs there, and they kill over. 600 maybe even a thousand a year they are just loaded with hogs so definitely ain't going nowhere anytime soon um and it's fun so the next thing for the night hunt night hunting animals to night hunt is coyotes so funny thing about the coyotes um i was at dinner tonight it's my i'm actually married and my seven-year-old now he's just turned seven today it's his birthday um we were at dinner and they were playing arcade games and i turned on my facebook app and saw this guy on a horse and don't ask me why but i played it and it was just a reel a quick little reel and he was talking about how coyotes did not used to be in the eastern united states and they've tried to eradicate the bison um they've definitely put a hurting on the wolves but they've tried to eradicate coyotes and cannot do it something about coyotes and being able to adapt they just aren't going anywhere and i can tell you from experience that all the places that i hunt it just seems like we don't even put a dent in them and we definitely are after them we definitely i mean we're not putting a lot of numbers down but we're definitely putting pressure on them every week or not every week but every once a month or twice a month um depending we try to spread out all of our stuff so that we're not over hunting area but it's just strange to me that there's so many of them and it just seems like we're not even putting a dent on them. it seems like they're just becoming more populated now there are people out there that can go out and kill, you know, 15 to 40, whatever on a weekend. That's not me. Um, those guys really know how to call and they're calling big properties, uh, mostly big properties. And they're basically calling to dogs that have never been called before. Um, and I say that that's not necessarily true, but they're not getting pressured like some of the dogs that I'm dealing with. And you never know, like I said, if, you're calling to them if other people are calling to them and sometimes they're just not in the mood so and sometimes you call to them and they start taking off i mean it just it just you can tell but it's fun and sometimes you can go and you can just turn on one call and they'll come in on a string it's the craziest thing but the coyotes are definitely there's a lot of them so i wanted to go down through here and talk about this as well um back on this i think i'm still sharing yeah i'm still screen sharing so good so um the the coyotes definitely are you know starting to attack people a little bit now uh i had a video on my phone from youtube that showed a coyote jumping in basically jumping up a six foot fence, pulling himself up on top and jumping on the roof of a shed and going into another backyard. Um, I've definitely, you know, whenever I hear somebody's cat's missing or their small dog is missing, I just kind of chuckle because it's probably missing and been taken by a coyote. That's just, you know, around here 
in the area that I live. They're everywhere. They're in town. Um, and they've been that way for a long time. And they use like, you know, the little patches of woods to travel around. You can catch them in people's yards and stuff sometimes. But the damage that they do to, you know, the livestock, the damage that they do to people's pets. I mean, they're just, they're resilient and they got to eat. And, uh, and then also, you know, I say rabbits, the damage they do to rabbits, but everywhere I go around here in Florida, I see so many rabbits. I wonder if they even eat rabbits. It's kind of funny, actually. Um, I know they probably do, but it just seems like there's a lot of rabbits here around where I hunt. I know, you know, they definitely are taking baby deer. I know baby turkeys, you know, easy meal, but, um, and definitely they're eating the afterbirth of the cows. So great place to hunt, um, cow fields, uh, rye fields. I've been, you know, out hunting and a lot of things we see out in the farm fields is a lot of rats and i've definitely seen them after fresh cut hay they're out there you know eating up what's the rats have been chopped up so coyotes ain't going anywhere again another great thing to hunt nighttime and then moving on to the next thing we're talking about deer depredation so um there's obviously other things to hunt at night as well. I'm not into them, but I mean, there's a guy on one of my Facebook groups that just shoots rats all the time. And a funny thing, my brother called me the other day and uh, he was asking about a uh, thermal for his neighbor to put on a pellet gun and was asking me if a thermal could see um, an iguana because down in South Florida, the iguanas are starting to overpopulate. So, you know, people are starting to shoot those. They're actually encouraged to remove them because they're invasive and they, you know, just they're, they're, they're crazy down there. Fortunately, there's not a lot of them up here yet in North central Florida, but um, you know, that's another thing again to hunt. Um, they don't really hunt those a lot at nighttime, but I'm sure you could, but the mice or rats, um, definitely I see a lot of videos on that in barns and stuff like that. Also pigeons, I see a lot of videos with thermals and pigeons in barns and stuff, pretty crazy. Um, you know, you can shoot in some places, you can shoot coons at night. Uh, I think you can do it here, I'm pretty sure, but there's some restrictions on that. Um, actually, in Florida, you are not allowed to kill the fox. But in other places, I know fox are definitely a big deal. Um, bobcats are open right now, I think, until March. So that's another great thing. And uh, don't see a lot of those, but they're definitely around. Bobcats and bobcats are very good hunters. Very good hunters. A lot of see them a lot. And uh, I've seen them a lot while hunting in the in deer on deer leases. But um. So that, um, you know, beaver, I guess people shoot a lot of beavers, maybe not so much at night, but I've definitely seen a couple of people doing that a little bit at nighttime. But my favorite thing, like I said, in the springtime is the deer depredation. So um, obviously being a deer hunter, you know, I like the fact that, you know, a big buck always chasing big bucks. Matter of fact, I got one up here is 123 inch Florida deer, but always chasing a bigger one. But, you know, I really don't like to spend a lot of time in the woods in the fall these days because I don't have a lot of time, a lot of free time. Now, maybe if I go up north and hunt, you know, that'd be a little bit of a different story, but I really like to put me in the freezer during the springtime for the deer depredation. So, and the cool thing about that is just typing in deer crop damage to 2022 here. The first thing that pops up is deer depredation permit FWC, which is Florida wildlife. So done a lot of that um, on multiple different occasions. Um, you know, the way I do it is actually a lot of work. It is work, but totally worth it. 
Um, don't like to let deer go to waste, to be honest. So definitely take as much meat as I can and uh, use it as a way to fill the freezer and help the farmer out at the same time. So definitely though, the deer, I mean, a, like two years ago, had over a thousand acres to hunt at nighttime on multiple permits and basically took out about 30 deer in three months, not by myself every time, but a lot of the times I was by myself. Sometimes I would just go out on Wednesday night, go to a spot, see one, shoot it, clean it, or go hang it in a in a cooler until Sunday. And, um, you know, just keep continuous pressure on the crops because the deer were eating the crops up. So I just think deer depredation is a cool thing. And, you know, back in the day, whenever before they had night fishing and stuff, they were just doing it with a gun and a light legally. But now with thermal, you know, it's just so much fun. And when I first started out, I started using night vision and the night vision works great. But if it starts to get foggy, you're done. And fog is kind of weird because one time, one second, it might be foggy and the next second it might just blow out. But then the next second it'll be back again. And, um, it's really works good whenever the crops are real sh shallow or real low or whenever it's first planted or, you know, fresh cut fields, stuff like that. But when the vegetation starts to get higher, it starts to get really difficult with the night vision because your vegetation catches a lot of the light and it makes it really hard to see animals through the vegetation to where a thermal will outperform a night vision a, a whole lot more a whole lot better it'll just outperform it to where you could see you know 10 feet in in vegetation you could see a deer with a thermal you'll never see it with night vision so although night vision does has its does have its advantages because you can id things a little bit better sometimes with night vision but the thermal is definitely going to be better in the higher vegetation and Honestly, if you ever go hunting with night vision and somebody else has thermal, it just feels like you're way behind the curve. So, but the deer depredation, definitely a cool thing. Not sure that I'll ever get into the rat stuff. Maybe the pigeon. I don't know. I mean, if I had a contract or something to remove them, it would be a lot of fun to set up a thermal on a pellet gun. I have a pellet gun one of the uh, gamos and uh, it is lightning fast, got a good punch to it. I actually have a rail where I could set one up and I had, I had a night vision scope on it before, but I took it off um, running that on a 22 Magnum now instead. But anyways, it'd be pretty fun to do that. Um, but that's pretty much it for, you know, things to hunt at night, you know, 2023, I see, the whole night hunting thing getting more and more popular. I see lots of new people getting into it. And this podcast is basically dedicated to, you know, it's for night hunters and it's all about night hunting. So <clears throat> the next thing that comes after this, you know, I've been night hunting for over five years now and I try to get out at least once a week, but sometimes twice a week. Like right now I'm on a two times a week type of deal. Plus I work full time. Plus I sell scopes and trying to run a business on the side as well. And the next thing that I see is, you know, building something really cool and it's not ready yet, but it's something that I'm going to start teasing a little bit of. So um, and then obviously this is just starting out this whole podcast and eventually my goal is to get to the point to where people are on here. It's kind of a live deal, you know, we'll take questions and stuff and also to do interviews, but I'm going to tease a little bit. I am creating something right now that I'm um, going to be opening soon and I'm going to try to build something really good here. So all around night hunting. So cool stuff. A lot of cool, you know, there's a lot of cool technology coming out. The prices on stuff is coming down. 
Um, you can get really good stuff right now for, you know, there's scopes out there that you can get. A, you can get in a night vision for 500, you know, just starting at 500. You can go a little cheaper than that, but it's cheap. Um, but 500 is a pretty good baseline. And then there's a lot of new stuff coming in at like 700 and, you know, just over a thousand. That's really quality stuff. And then as well, there, you know, to, for thermal, I mean, if you had a limited budget, you could start around 999 or a thousand bucks to get into thermal, but you're going to be really limited with that. I would suggest that if you had a little bit better budget or if you know you're not going to be happy with a thousand dollar scope to save up 2000 or even 2500, 2500 is a good baseline right now for some very quality stuff. And then they, even at 2999, you can get a decent. 3x powered 3x base magnification powered compact scope with a rangefinder in it for 29.99 and that's an amazing deal and having a rangefinder is really good as well so the prices are coming down the competition is fierce you know and competition always breeds good pricing but there's no way that you know night hunting is definitely going to be around for a long time so I'm really excited to be here in this podcast and I'm looking forward to serving night hunters and I'm pretty much going to wrap this up for this, uh, for this episode. We'll do basically every Tuesday night at nine o'clock, we're going to keep on meeting and um, we're going to keep doing this and that's going to be it for this episode. So thank you for, uh, for tuning in and I guess we'll see you on the next.